So in the last lecture, we saw um, the definition of countable sets and we proved uh, characterization of countably infinite sets and countable sets. Now, um, in this lecture, we are going to discuss infinite sets and the axiom of choice. So what is the axiom of choice? Axiom of choice. It says that uh, given a non-empty collection, non-empty collection of uh, sets denoted A, then there exists, there exists, um, so let, let me add that uh, these sets are all disjoint of disjoint sets. Okay, um, then there exists a set C uh, such that C intersection um, A is a singleton um, for any A in A. So, um, informally, it says that we can create a set uh, choosing one element from each of these sets, each set A in this collection. Okay. So this is why it's called the axiom of choice because we are choosing one element and precisely only one element from each of these sets A. So what is the relation with infinite sets? So here's our main theorem which says that if A is a set then the following are equivalent, the following statements. So first one is that there exists an injective function f from the natural numbers to A. The second one is that there exists a bijection between A and a proper subset of A. And the third is that A is infinite. So let's try to prove this theorem. So again we will prove 1 implies 2 implies 3 implies 1. So let's see 1 implies 2. So suppose that suppose that there exists an injective function f from n to a as given. Now um, we write uh, f n to be a n. Okay, so we denote rather we denote or write so so this set a1 a2 um, up to infinity is a subset of a and this is just the range of f under n so um, let g now be a function from a minus a1 the set a1 to a and we define this function as follows so g a um, is equal to a n plus 1 if a equal to a n for some n and g a equals to a if uh, a belongs to uh, a minus f n. So the diagram is something like this. So this is your a, a, and this is your f n, f n, and this is a minus f n. So for any point a in a minus f n, this function g takes it to itself and you have fn is just a sequence of, of uh, points a1, a2, a3 and so on and so it maps a1 to a2 
a2 to a3, a3 to a4 and so on and this is how g is defined. So um, it is easy to check, it is easy to check that g is a bijection between a and a minus a1 which is a proper subset of a and this proves the first part so now 2 implies 3 uh, so if there is this uh, bijection between a and a proper subset then a is infinite it is just the contrapositive contrapositive of this statement which we have already proved which is that a is finite this implies that there is no bijection no bijection between a and a proper subset of a so 2 to 2 implies 3 is also uh, immediate so let's see how 3 implies 1 so now we are given that a is infinite infinite and we have to show that there exists an injective function function f from um, n to a so now uh, i will use the axiom of choice for this axiom of choice So we use the axiom of choice as follows. So first uh, we consider the collection collection of all infinite subsets infinite subsets of A and let me call this denoted by this uh, B letter and note that that since A is infinite A belongs to this collection and so B is is a non-empty collection so now um, to use the axiom of choice we need to make sure that our collection consists consists of disjoint subsets so how do we make this collection b to be a collection of disjoint subsets so here's one idea so let for each um, set b in b so this is an infinite set we define choose uh, uh, we define define b prime to be the collection of ordered pairs b comma b such that b is an element of b and now um, take the collection take the collection a to be the collection of these sets b such that b is in the collection kept, uh, script b so now I claim that A is collection of disjoint sets. Disjoint sets. So why is that? Because if uh, B1 is not equal to B2 in B, then uh, the corresponding sets corresponding sets b1 prime and b2 prime are disjoint because any element here in b1 prime it will be of the form b1 comma b1 and any element uh, in b2 prime will be of the form b2 comma b2 so if they are if they have a common element then b1 must be equal to b2 
so if they are equal then b1 equals b2 which is a contradiction to the fact that b1 is not equal to b2 which is a contradiction so we see that a is a collection of disjoint sets and now by the axiom of choice axiom of choice um, applied to this collection a there exists a set c such that c intersection any element b prime in a is the must consist of a single element b comma b so for any b prime in uh, this collection a so we will use this uh, set c to define our function uh, to define our injective function f from n to a we proceed using the principle of recursion so how do we use this so let a1 in a be an arbitrary element and let f of 1 be defined to be this uh, element a1 and the principle of recursion requires you to define f of n uniquely in terms of f1 f2 up to fn minus 1 so suppose that f1 f2 up to f n minus 1 have been defined uniquely uniquely defined and now we want to define f of n in terms of in terms of f1 f2 up to fn minus 1 uniquely now to to, to define fn um, consider the set b which is a minus f1 f2 f of n so note that since a is infinite b is also infinite so b is an infinite subset of uh, a and therefore uh, b must belong to the collection b that we defined earlier of the collection of all infinite subsets of a and now corresponding to b corresponding to b there is a unique element element in c intersection b prime so b prime again is formed using b is the corresponding uh, set of pairs b b such that b is in this set b so here now are, we are fixing our set b to be a minus f1 f2 fn and this is of the form uh, so this is of the form b comma b naught so there is a single element in this intersection and we choose our b naught to be f of n so let f of n be b naught so this is uh, of course uniquely defined this is uniquely defined because our set c was formed in this way so the only thing uh, that one should prove is that f is injective so suppose that suppose that fn is equal to fm for some n m in the natural numbers so we have to show that n is equal to m so the way we um, 
formed um, these this uh, these elements f of n we can arrive at a contradiction so now we have to show that n is equal to m so we use the definition of our function f for this purpose so suppose that um, n is strictly less than m okay then we arrive at a contradiction as follows um, then f of n is the element in uh, the second coordinate coordinate um, of a minus f1 f2 fn minus 1 okay and you choose the point b in this set b okay this is how we define and this was an element of c so this is how we define f of n similarly f of m is the element element in the second coordinate of a minus f1 f2 up to f m minus 1 comma uh, some other element b prime which belongs to this set so let me call the first one bn and this is bm okay and this again belongs to c so what is the contradiction uh, here so notice that fn lies here fn because n is strictly less than m it contains this set uh, f1 f2 up to fm minus 1 contains fn okay and so so since fn is contained in this um, set f1 f2 up to fn minus 1 and b prime is in the set difference a minus this so b prime cannot be equal to f of n so so this b prime was exactly our f of m so f of m is not equal to f of n which is a contradiction to our uh, assumption that fn is equal to fm so this is a this is a contradiction similarly if m is less than n we can repeat the same argument and we arrive at a contradiction so therefore this shows that n must be equal to m this implies that n is equal to m and so our function defined this way is injective and so we see that um, the axiom of choice can be used to prove that if a set is infinite then there exists an injective function from the set of natural numbers to that set so um, this completes our discussion of set theory and logic and in the next lecture we shall begin with the definition of a topology on a set x and we will see what are the properties and axioms of such a structure